so now it's March 2003, and the Iraq War has been turned around. Uh, Britain and uh, United States look like total idiots uh, trying to go into Iraq, so they managed to go in on their own. And now it's like, oh, if you know, here I am trying to get the kids to think for themselves, and I was harassed in in, in Holy Cross about that, and learn to eat organically or whatever. Now it's like. Oh, what, what am I going to talk about, the Illuminati and the Black Pope? Because uh, this is what was going on. I knew, uh, what was his name? Um, uh, Lewis Davis had sent me this Black Pope file, and I had never read it until later. But when I uncovered the fact that who's behind all this was actually the Roman Catholic Church, the Vatican, and the higher-ups, and it wasn't the Muslims at all, it was like, whoa, you know, last time I was disabled with this, with all this harassment and took, took down in Woodbridge uh, because of, you know, wanting the kids to learn how to garden and think for themselves. Now, what am I going to do with, with this information? I mean, they're certainly going to shoot me. So, um, what happened was, uh, I because I was supply teaching every time when I was on leave of absence, I could go in and supply teach wherever I wanted to, so the phones would ring and I get to pick my, my place. And then, this is great, because I could go to Newmarket, then flyer my way back home with Junior Genius Flyers, or go to Markham the next day. And then I could sit there and make 180 bucks a day and work on my laptop on my business anyway. So that was good for me because it got me with the kids and also I could do my grade growers groups. But going into the classrooms after knowing what I knew, it was very hard for me to keep my mouth shut because these kids are working along blaming the Muslims. And I was like, it's not the Muslims at all, it's us. You know, I couldn't keep my mouth shut. And it's like, what am I going to do? I'm supposed to go back in September and, and teach these kids. And I know I'm going to say something. I know I'm going to say go to hiddenmysteries.com and, and uh, you know, go to vaticanassassins.org. What am I going to do? So, I had to make a decision. I was spamming um, the, the Catholic School Board because I had everybody's email address for Great Grover's Group. I was doing my advertising that way. So, I had all the Catholic Board and all the Public Board in York Region. I had all their email addresses. So, I'm getting this information out and, uh, you know, I was using all different email addresses because they kept changing their email addresses and uh, ignoring me. So it's like, well, geez, you, you're going to ignore me like that? You know, they ignored me since February because I was waking everybody up since January since I got the Illuminati 9-11 videos. So come September, I, I tell them actually I resigned in, in March because it took that long for me to, they took about six or seven months to move my pension and then have my ritual gra uh, retirement ceremony, which was in November. Uh, this was 2003 still. And, uh, and then I could supply teach, but it had to take a certain period where I couldn't supply teach. So in March, I faxed them saying, I'm going to resign from permanent teaching, keep me on the supply list. And so my, my uh, retirement got transferred. Uh, Lewis Davis from Institute of Global Prosperity said that, you know, go into this, uh, move your uh, retirement to the Supreme Water Corporation, which was in BC. And I listened to him, I trusted him, I trusted, I, I'm trusting, that's my problem. And uh, so I did, it was $65,000 in my retirement. I managed to take $20,000 out so that I could live till uh, November because I'm building my business. It was just, I was putting money into it. I was spending like $2,000 a month on Yellow Pages because it wasn't ready to kick off yet. Um, I went in November. You can see the smile on my face at graduation. I got this little grin going, you guys are not saying anything. You know what's going on with the corruption. But uh, so I went in in uh, November, had my graduate, my retirement party. By December the 13th, something like that, I could start teaching again. So I did. I managed to go back to supply teaching, and a couple of days, a couple of days, they gave me uh, in computer class. They gave me a couple, um, you know, classes I could pick. One was uh, computer class, and the topic was uh, cashless society and virtual reality. I said, well, that's perfect. I had my David Ike books on my desk you know, casually, you know, teaching them the mark of the beast, the microchip, what's coming, and the kids printed out the black pope. I did it knowing that this was the only way I could do this and uh, without, you know, getting fired because they gave me a lesson to teach in cashless society and virtual reality and I taught the, the, the truth. So the superintendent calls me uh, the next day, she goes, Dana, what are you doing? Uh, this is uh, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Hill. And uh, I said, what? I said, you gave me a lesson to teach in cash to society and virtual reality. Um, I said, I said it's in the Bible. It's the mark of the beast, 666. You should know your Bible. You're Catholic. So she hung up. Nothing happened. I managed to continue on with my uh, teaching because there was no warning or anything. And, you know, I was teaching truth. And I was teaching a topic that was based in the classroom. So the 
coming on, this is December the 17th when I finally, 2003 when I got disconnected from Supply Dispatch. And uh, so 2003, uh, I'm sitting in the biology class at Brother Andre in my old school and uh, they call an announcement for the flu shot. <laughs> And I just, it's like, don't get the flu shot, you know, and the kids are looking at me because they're all going down and they get the flu shot. And I said, uh, I said, even the uh, the MMR vaccination, which is the mumps, measles, and rubella vaccination, that causes learning disabilities. And so I gave them the reference, hiddenmysteries.com. And uh, we talked about dogma and doctrine, and the kids were really interested in, you know, talking about that. But uh, when I told them not to get the flu shot, that's when the phone stopped ringing the next day for supply dispatch and I was disconnected. So there was no notice, there was no goodbye. So I just kind of said, what's going on? You know, I haven't done anything wrong. I just told told the kids something and then gave them a reference, but you know, I didn't get any warnings or anything. So this is December. I'm left in Toronto with all these bills, the uh, uh, 2000 you know, dollars a month of, uh, what is it, uh, Yellow Pages bills and stuff too. And uh, I'm sitting here terrified now because I know it's the Catholic board that's, uh, you know, it's the Catholic system that that's, is causing all the trouble and all the propaganda. It's it's funneled right at the top because they're Luciferians. So and that's, you can go into the Black Pope videos that I have and I explain that. But um, so he, I took them to labor relations. Actually, I had, a, I called my, uh, uh, my supply, supply teacher union rep. And uh, we went in finally in January and, uh, you know, we, there was four women there. There was me, her, supply teacher union rep, I forget it, Marilyn uh, something, Jeremy Hall, and then uh, her lawyer. It's it's on holyhealthy.com. Uh, Linda, Linda Coulter. So there's four women there. I'm thinking that women can reason through this. So I gave them my... Uh, Stop, no, Weapon of Mass Instruction, it's it's on uh, holyhealthy.com. Uh, that flyer and with the DVD in an envelope after the meeting because she said that, well, you quit your job. She goes, obviously, you know, you did this. I said, well, this is mystery school. I mean, this is hiddenmysteries.com is, is a website. I said, there's nothing, no big deal about it. And when you give me a lesson to teach in cash and society virtual reality, we should have freedom of discussion. She goes, well, <clears throat> you won't be able to be talking about this. And um, so we can't let you back in supply dispatch. This is a verbal thing. So she goes, and what will you be doing now? I said, well, I guess I'll have to run my business somehow. So there's nothing written that I got fired or anything. I'm waiting. Jer uh, my uh, union rep says that we're going to support this. And so we're walking out. And she goes, yeah, yeah, we'll meet for lunch tomorrow. We'll meet for lunch tomorrow. And I call her that night. I said, did you look at the video? And she goes, no, not yet. And so this is, uh, yeah, February, sorry, Janu end of January, early February. So I gave her a chance to, to shock herself because it's now 2004. And, uh, you know, and she says, I'm going to meet with uh, Ed, Ed Shudak, who's the union rep. And he goes, we're going to get this fixed. She had no idea what the information that was in the, uh, the envelope with the six videos that I have posted on holyhealthy.com. So uh, what, what happens was is she didn't um, call me back. And I waited, and I left a message with Ed Shudak, and I said, this, these are the people you need to um, uh, talk to or get a hold of, because I thought we were going to fix this situation. You know, it's, it's corrupt. It's horrific. It's our, it's, our, it's our problem. It's a Catholic force problem. So he didn't contact me. I didn't know what to do. I contacted uh, uh, some lawyers. Uh, there was a really, you know, a good one, an Italian one. I forget his name now. Um, you know, he recommended you, oh, it's very difficult to get this done. He was also uh, exposing the 9-11 stuff, and I didn't uh, know what to do. I didn't know what avenues to take. I called Human Rights. I, call, I e emailed Silverman. I faxed him. I faxed a whole bunch of people. The list is on those who have videos are accountable. And finally, I took um, the Catholic Board, OECTA, uh, and uh, to, human, uh, to Labor Relations in April. I filed, finally, because nobody was doing anything so I'm going to be running out of time but this gets to the point where now I am unemployable and um, I uh, yeah so I'm stuck in, in Toronto scared to death that someone's going to kill me for what I know and so I'm, I'm working all night and sleeping in the daytime terrified that someone's going to come to the door but in the end I needed to move home in, in July 2004 uh, pickup trucks back and forth 
to get everything out of Toronto and I came back into a very abusive home and environment and the story.